Um, Tena Koto, my name is Amanda Larson. I'm a climate and energy campaigner for Greenpeace. Um, and I'm really excited that you're all here for this discussion because I feel like this is probably the most exciting time for energy in kind of the history of energy since electrification began hundreds, over 100 years ago. Um, and the reason for that is that the need to decarbonize our society because of climate change is driving some really cool technological innovations that mean that we can rewire our energy system to be something much better than what it is today. Um, and, you know, our energy system is a bit broken, right? Um, oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> they agree with us, obviously. Um, but, you know, the, um, the government released its electricity price review a couple days ago, and what they found resoundingly was that New Zealanders are getting a pretty raw deal. Um, New Zealand households have seen their electricity prices rise by 80% over the last 30 years. That's really high and really fast compared to, um, to other developed countries. And perhaps most shockingly, um, compared to business and industrial users, you haven't seen prices rise nearly as much. Um, so, you know, and alongside that, we've seen a real stall in um, the construction of clean energy here in New Zealand. Um, two and a half gigawatts of, of wind energy have been consented for construction but haven't been built. Um, We've seen households that are pioneering by putting solar panels on their roofs slapped with unfair charges, um, the solar tax that we saw down in the Hawke's Bay, um, and seeing their buyback rates slashed as well. Um, so really being penalized for doing something that's quite pioneering and helping to add clean electricity to the grid. And the result of that is that we've met, you know, 4% of our solar potential in this country, and that's a real shame. Um, so, um, that's why uh, we're standing here today to talk about how we can fix this. There's clearly um, a growing environmental and social injustice in the way that we make energy in this country. And something really needs to change. Um, and, you know, um, excitingly for us, something really has changed. When the government announced earlier this year that they wouldn't be issuing any new permits for offshore oil and gas exploration, that sent a pretty clear signal that we need to look for other ways to power our society. And what needs to happen now is for New Zealand to embark on a pretty ambitious program to build the clean energy that's needed to replace those outdated fuels of the past. And that big program to build lots of, lots of new infrastructure is also an opportunity for us to change the way that our energy system works and to redesign the rules so that it's more fair um, and also looks after this precious atmosphere that sustains life here. You know, we often forget um, that the only reason we're alive is because of this, this climate that we need to look after. Um, so that's why we as Greenpeace have, have launched a bit of a, we're calling it a discussion paper because we don't think we have all the answers um, and today is, is the time to start this discussion. Um, about what a new energy vision for Aotearoa New Zealand actually looks like. Um, and you've all got copies of the paper that you can skim through, thanks for the support, um, when you have a moment. Um, but just to give you an overview, we've got five, five points. Five points is usually a good number um, for energy transformation. The first of those is, is rewriting the rules so that the energy sector exists to provide affordable energy to New Zealanders and clean energy that decarbonizes our society, as well as enshrining the right of every person to be able to produce or store or save energy and achieve fair compensation for doing that. The, uh, the second part of our program is to make it easier for households to generate their own energy. And I'm gonna talk about that a bit more with this, this policy that we have released today. Um, but it's also about giving community energy a chance because here in New Zealand those, those projects have really struggled to get off the ground compared to other parts of the world where community energy is really flourishing. Um, uh, the third part of this plan is to double down on energy efficiency. Um, I think many of us have experienced a winter in a cold, damp New Zealand home um, and it really doesn't have to be that way. There's 600,000 under-insulated homes in New Zealand um, that we could very easily warm up and, and allow people to live more comfortable lives as well as cutting down the amount of energy that we use. Um, next up, the, uh, the government has banned offshore oil and gas exploration permits. Um, it's time to reintroduce the ban on new thermal power generation, um, new gas peaking plants, for example, which, um, which are on the cards in some parts of this country in 2018, shockingly, um, with the technology that we have today. 
Um, and in addition to that, uh, managing a transition away from um, thermal energy generation. So um, providing a just transition for workers in that industry. And then finally, um, in this report, we talk about some bold projects because we feel like this is an energy transition. It's, it's not a slow evolution of our energy system. Um, and we really need the government to show some leadership and back some bold projects. And one of those we announced today, um, which is that we've run the numbers. Um, and it's entirely possible for the government to provide zero interest loans to 500,000 households over the next 10 years. Um, to kickstart the solarization of New Zealand um, and put power back in the hands of New Zealanders. Um, so I'm really excited that you're here today. I'm excited to, to hear from what our panel of experts has to say. Um, like I said, Greenpeace doesn't have all the answers to the energy transition and we're very happy to be here with other people who do have the answers um, to hear what they have to say. Um, so thank you very much for coming tonight um, and I hope you enjoy the discussion.